Hello and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. It's a new week in Fortnite, and although they've moved to a two week update cycle, loads of things have been discovered this week. If you're new around these parts, this is the series in which we search for map changes and secrets, and slowly piece together storylines and try to predict the future. Slap code Adamaru in the store to support these shenanigans, and let's do this. You know where I'm starting. Oh no, this can't be! Hut Watch is burning down! Before it had a chance to live! Nah, don't worry, this place is completely fine. The new item for the week allows us to burn structures in-game. The fireflies can be gathered anywhere on the island right now and gets us one step closer to the return of the greatest LTM ever, the floor is lava. This has to be the season to bring it back, right? Pretty please epic. Okay, back to the real stuff. So, the Marauders, what do you think about these guys? They arrive from outer space and crash down, ready to shoot and party. Some legitimately have aimbots, and some are so dumb they could be related to me. Each of the Marauders is a different class, including this thick boy. Well get this, have you ever moved the camera close enough to their faces? Each one has a face to discover- whoa, okay, not all of them, but most of them have a face to discover. Do you recognise any of these people? Well, these guys are from the Save the World portion of the game. These are the heroes of that Fortnite game mode. The shot guy is here, Sarah can be found too, and a few others. But this thick boy, I'm paying extra attention to, because this guy is Kyle, a constructor class in Save the World. I'm so happy to see him make the jump to BR. But there's another constructor who is more important than Kyle. If you've been around here before, I'm sure you know who that is. Penny! Where the heck is Penny? Ah, <sighs> Penny. This has to be deliberate, right? To have so many Save the World characters out here in force, only to leave out the one which matters the most. Epic, why you bully us? There are many pennies to choose from. I only want one of them. I realise I go on about this far too often, so let me know in the comments if I should shut up about Penny. I can take it. But if you're with me, hit me with Team Thick in the comments. Let's see how many of us there are. Ok, I've started ranting, I'll get back on point. If the Marauders can't find anyone, they'll have a dance party to regain health. I like that touch. They also have their own builds, which have this white line across, so you can identify and track them down if you want their loot. One day, though, they will start cranking 90s. And only Penny can stop this. Come on, Penny. Crazy mother- Let's go back to the story of gnomes and bears. Last week, my search for the misfits was fruitless. But thanks to so many of you guys, I now know where to find them. And we've uncovered something very interesting. If you didn't know, after the gnome bear truce last season, the two sides have now set up a surrender zone under a white flag. These guys are the best of friends playing games and enjoying a drink together. Gandalf and Nick Furry, the super chilled. But wait a minute, those two using the telescope may be giving us a clue here. By following the general direction of the scope, it leads all the way back to Graham in his ivory tower. This shows that this gnome is going to be part of something new, so let's break down the evidence. Well, there's only one piece of evidence so far, but let's break that one thing down, the pirate flag. It's highly likely this is only for a challenge, but then I got word of an imposter pirate near the huge whirlpool. Look for yourself, in the attic of this building is something strange, another misfit bear looking mighty similar to Nick Furry. By the way, I don't name these characters. When we find someone new, you guys name it. But anyway, this guy is in full pirate mode with a high-tech galleon built for the high seas. Or it's a bathtub. He can dream, I suppose. But the real question here is the loot beside him. OG pirate gold from chapter one. What could this mean? It can't be a coincidence that the pirate flag is found at the radio shack and only a few days later, Pirate's gold was found. We need more clues to solve this. Oh, hang on. Does this mean I can bring back my bad pirate dad jokes? I really like pirate jokes. I'm completely hooked. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Oh, before I move on, a few people have asked to confirm that I have seen the Bear Gnome show going on at the No Sweat storage building. I sure have. Thank you for the heads up. And I also checked on the gnome guarding the sacred golden toilet in the underwater dam. What a trooper. I guess this guy lives here now. Gnome sweet gnome. 
that was a bad joke. I need help with gnome jokes, please. I will legit be in the comments throwing hearts out for bad dad jokes I can use in future episodes. Thanks in advance. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to something else, something potentially mind-blowing and story-related. Did you see how the season was revealed, with Midas, a beaten man on a raft? Well, moments before the shark attacked, look in the background and you'll see a desert island. You'll likely think, Adam, that means nothing, but look again, it has three trees and some sort of sign on the right. Do you recognise it? Well, one year ago to this very week, Fortnite showed us a comedy short in which Jonesy is marooned on a desert island and he uses a flare gun to call for help. Things didn't go well for him and just as he picks up the Vic Roy, take a look at the island. Three trees and a signpost. The very same one as the season three reveal. There's exactly one year in between these two videos. Could this be coincidence? Yeah, it could be. Could this be a reused asset? Yeah, definitely. Or could this link to the storyline? Were Epic foreshadowing the future like they've done so many times before? Or are they showing us that this narrative we are following is being told out of order? I'll need to go away and make a story video to explain what I mean there, but at face value, the same island in the background has to mean something. I just wish I could find it in game. It reminds me of the carving tree last season. I'm still looking for that right now. On a side note, if this theory is correct, we already have an origin story to explain Peely. Agent Jonesy couldn't leave things well enough alone. Alright, I think I'm going too far, reel me back in. So, I went to visit the crustaceans that lived on the island, which is now a huge whirlpool. Sad to say they've lost their home, but in the replay files, these guys are still here, vibing under the waves. Some have moved on though, and created a new home south of Steamy Stacks on an island made of trash. It's a tough time for them, but they're still in high spirits. The thing many of us missed on day one is the shape of this island. Do you see it? It's shaped like a piranha fish, hiding in plain sight. At first I thought this was a flopper, but look at those teeth! This thing is vicious. Again, is this foreshadowing something, or just a cool little easter egg? I continued looking for clues around the map and noticed something at the authority. Whilst moving the camera across the table, check out the reflection. This is the original agency, complete with the Ego logos and the OG table, and even Midas' golden chair. I'm sure this isn't a hint or a clue or something like that, it's just simply someone didn't switch out the textures. But I like it, still awesome all the same to see this, and it reminds us of simpler times when shark attacks and marauders weren't our main issues for survival. Whilst I was looking around the island, my camera clipped underneath the world, so I quickly checked many locations to see if anything was hiding. For example, I went to the bunker, and nope, nothing is behind those doors just yet. I also checked under the authority to see if I could find the doomsday device, and no, there's nothing. The only thing of real note here is this, a small piece of rectangular grass which wasn't here last time I checked. These things are usually placeholders or items which contain future code variables. Pretty cool to see in-game though. In fact, there were more things to note under the waves. The vending machines are still present around the island, and remember the original Ego plane which crashed on the island all those months ago? It's still here, but it's now updated to confirm the water level is dropping. The island is degrading, and now a wing is hanging over the edge. By clipping through the wall below, we can see the plane's other propeller buried into the ground. This all tells us that the water levels will be declining, and soon we will see a new world filled with decay and destruction. Happy days. Above the water, we should note that the pizza pit truck isn't waiting around. It's relocating currently, using a tugboat to find a new home. Where do you think this thing could stop? The other fast food vans are on land already, and pretty safe right now. Could this be the return of the food fight? Get your butt over to Sweaty Sands and you'll see a building crew has moved in to expand or change this place around. But here's something to note, it looks like a movie is being shot on the pier. Maybe it's Aquaman. Or maybe this season is following the chapter 1 arc and the movie set which was interrupted by meteor showers. Do you remember that? That storyline was great and right now we have an astronaut with a meteor in the battle pass. So things certainly line up. Okay, so there we have it, week two in the books. What did I miss and how do you think the story will evolve? 
The water levels are set to drop later this week, so I'll be back again once that happens to give you another update. On screen now are some of the people who used code Adamaru to grab the battle pass this season, and over 1,000 people used my code, which blows my mind, but all that money is going straight back to you guys in giveaways. I'll explain more when I can. Anyway, please know that I have so many more people to thank in my Twitter DMs before I name them here in the video. So sorry for the wait, I've never had support like this before, and I will reply to every legitimate Code Adamaru DM you send. It'll just take me time to get there, but I will get there. Thank you once again for sticking around, I really appreciate it, you're awesome, stay that way. I'm Adam from PlayStation Grenade. See ya!